Abigail Mitchell devised such a fresh new way to scrapbook one's memories, you could literally wrap yourself around them. And since she made it look so easy, I wanted a mini lesson. Okay, so we are standing with Gail in her sewing studio right now, and what I'm interested to know is how do we get from concept to fruition? How do we go from the idea to the actual quilt? You really should design it first mm. on paper. Okay. All right, can I show you an example please, of what please. I'm doing? Please, please, yes. And so what I did was I took the paper, and I thought about our goal, and our goal was to show uh, oh, African Americans nice. in the historical uh, perspective uh -huh. in America. Uh -huh. So I said, what would be a great idea would be a, to have a flag. And then I said, well, what I would do next was either put pictures around the outside, mm -hmm. or either have the children sign around the out outside of the flag. Oh, yes! Put it in the middle. This is going to be the medallion. These are the signature squares. Yes. Right. I'm going to show you how we do the, make the signature squares. Right. First, I cut a perfect white square using a ruler and a rotary cutter. A printed fabric, which goes on top of the white, is then cut to size. Mine is a little sloppy there. Hers is a perfect square. But hey, it's okay. It's okay. So now we're going to make... We're making this piece this. Okay. All right. Next, the printed fabric is folded on the sides and sewed on to create a pattern. This is going in the middle. See that needle? It's right in the middle. Yes. See that line right there? Yes. I'm going to line this line up, my uh, traced line. Make sure I have this lined up right. I reluctantly made friends with Gail's sewing machine to complete my first quilt square. I was nervous, the buttons were daunting, and I had to focus hard not to jam my finger on that needle. But Gail was nothing if not a wonderful teacher. push this down to bring my needle down. There's a perfectionist in the house. Okay, now I'm going to do my scissor cutter here. That's it. That's, That's it. it. Look, I didn't. I can take it and someone will say, can you sign right there in the middle, President right. Obama, for me? Thanks, President Obama. Every corner of Gail's house was filled with exquisite artwork. I had to speak to the one other person who was lucky enough to live amidst them. I encouraged her many, many years ago to uh, do more with her art because she's always been an artist. Gail has told me a lot about not only the, uh, about art and about quilting, but also about the history of uh, African American uh, people. And when I asked him how other people reacted to her art, that they really like what she does. Mm -hmm. But I'm her biggest fan. I love what she does. When she's not behind the sewing machine, Gail Mitchell teaches English as a second language to international students now in the U.S. A group of them decided to stop by for a visit. Oh, gosh. And I think what she's doing is a wonderful job. Absolutely. And I think it's important that you know your ancestors and your roots. doesn't matter where you live. And finally, we all sat down to play one of Gail's favorite board games. Okay, we're sitting here with you and all of the students, and we're going to play Monopoly! Okay, I guess it's not Monopoly. No, it's not! <laughs> <laughs> it's a take on Monopoly called Quiltopoly, but what else can you expect from a master quilt artist? This is the board. Oh, look, it looks just like the board game. Yes, it does. And look, stipple quilting. That's what I just that's learned, isn't it? That's what you do upstairs on your signature square. <laughs>